Hello people from the future. Welcome to Ramalize Nerd. So today we are going to talk about Fourier series and how you can use Fourier series to generate any periodic function. Well, what you are currently looking at is a Fourier series approximation of something called square wave. Well, square wave is nothing but you can see that a square shaped wave from you we are getting here. Well, actually the Fourier series is approximating this square wave. Every periodic function can every periodic function has its own Fourier series and by using the Fourier series we are generating the square wave and in this portion we can see that there are a bunch of cycles well actually these are called epicycles and these epicycles are generating the Fourier series and these are drawing the our beautiful curve so as usual we are first going to look at the concept of Fourier series and after that we are going to jump into the code section so what Fourier actually discovered is that uh, suppose we have a periodic function f of x so we can now represent this function as an infinite sum of some cosines and some sines so uh, this is the representation of ge a general Fourier series so what we have here there are couple of, there are a bunch of uh, cos terms and there are a bunch of sine terms and you can see that in front of them we have a coefficient in the cos we have a coefficient a n and in the sines we have the coefficient b n and you can notice here that there is alone a zero so if you can if you think uh, a little bit logically then you will find out that for n is equal to zero the cos n x that will be cos zero so that will give me one so the a zero term will be there but in case of science we won't be having any b0 terms because in here if we put n is equal to 0 then we will get 0 so that's not gonna give me any b0 so there is only a0 alone so the basic idea is that suppose we have a general function like this one so what Fourier said is that we can approximate this function by an uh, infinite summation of cosines and sines. So in take uh, so in reality we don't actually take the infinite summation, but we actually take some finite number of summations. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just draw some sines and cosine functions, and by adding them with the multiplication of these coefficients, give me will eventually give me this function this general function okay and remember that we are considering that it is a periodic function so after this I will again have the same pattern okay so suppose our first function is something like that this can be a cosine or sine and our second function is something like this our third function is something like this and so on so let me suppose that if I add all of these functions with their proper coefficients, suppose this is a i, this is a b i, and this is a j and b j and so on. If we add all of them, and obviously I will gonna have a, a zero term, this will give me this function. So this is the basic idea of Fourier series. We have a function and we approximate it by adding an infinite number of sine waves and cosine waves with their proper coefficients. Now, if you look into the formula a bit closely, then you can see that here we have running n from 1 to infinity. So what that means? Well, it means that every function, the coefficient of every cosine and sine wave is a multiple of, uh, so by adding all these waves we are getting this function now so this was the basic concept of Fourier series and how we can approximate a function by a bunch of sine and cosine waves and in reality we are not going to add the infinite numbers of them we are just going to add finite numbers of them and in this way we can approximate any function with pretty good accuracy well uh, so let me show you the function that I used in our example which was a 
square wave function. So uh, let me just try to draw the components of it. So we may have a component like this. We may have another component, something like this, another one like this, another one like this. So you can see that whenever the amplitude is more, that simply denotes the value of the coefficient is more. And whenever you see that there are more number of these spikes with the same uh, in the same interval, that simply means the frequency is greater. So obviously, the frequency of this wave is much greater than this. Well, this greater frequency we get by multiplying this n terms with the frequency because obviously every frequency will be a multiple of x. So uh, that was pretty much the concept of Fourier series. Now we are going to look at how we can associate this Fourier series with our epicycle things. Let me draw a circle here with a radius r. Let me also draw the coordinate axis. So that was my y axis and this is my x axis. Now uh, suppose uh, the angle between x axis and this r vector is theta and as time t increases we are rotating this r vector from this point in this direction. So initially the r vector was here and as time is increasing the theta is increasing okay so at some time uh, t let the theta let the angle is theta so what will be the coordinate of this point well actually this is very easy to find using trigonometry and i hope you know how to find it so i'm not going to uh, get into the derivation of this coordinate finding thing i'm just going to directly write it the x coordinate is r cosine of theta and the y coordinate is r sine of theta. Now uh, suppose we are going to project uh, this vector in this plane okay this vertical plane so uh, my torch is here and rays are coming from this side and we are going to project this vector so what I'm gonna get here well actually uh, if this is my projection wall so what I'm gonna get here is that there is a point and uh, this is the center and this thing will be r sine theta. This is just the y value, right? Y coordinate of this point. So initially, my projection would be here at t is equal to 0. And as t is increasing, it will just go up. And at the point, it will reach this point. This will be the projection. And after that, it will again come down and it will hit this maximum and again it will go up. So now uh, let me suppose that as t is increasing this projection plane is translating in this direction right. So in that case what I'm gonna get well let me just uh, suppose let me just consider the path of this traveling point okay so what will be the path well if you look very closely it you can find that this will actually be the graph of r sine theta. Yes. So I'm going to get this kind of graph. Now you may ask, what is theta here? Well, if my angular velocity is omega, so the theta will be actually omega times t. So this is the graph I'm getting. So uh, now by doing this, you can easily see that we can generate a sine wave by just projecting the tip of this R vector on a vertical plane and by translating the vertical plane with the time. So what will happen if we increase the omega? Well, that simply means that now uh, theta will be increasing more rapidly. So that will simply mean that my curve is going to look like something like this. You can easily see the frequency has increased. Now uh, let me uh, show you another insight is that 
Suppose in, I am having a circle with a radius much smaller than the previous one. So if I do the same thing on this circle, what I'm going to get? So now I'm going to get a sine wave of same frequency as this one. But in this case, the amplitude will decrease. And now I'm going to get something like this. So you can easily see the amplitude is dependent on this r, the length of the r, and the frequency is dependent on the omega, the angular speed. So uh, now let me introduce another concept, which is the addition of two waves to get a different wave. So suppose I am having a circle here, and uh, this is its radius, and definitely this will correspond to some wave uh, like this one and let me consider another circle much smaller than that and probably with a different frequency and with a diff uh, probably with a different frequency so it will generate uh, a wave like this suppose so what will be the resultant of these two well i am drawing it very roughly here so I can actually have a wave like this. So now the question arises, how can I add these two things in this epicycle? Well, if we are familiar with complex numbers, then it will be very easy for us. So complex numbers are two dimensional numbers and they are generally represented as this. So uh, this is the imaginary axis and this is the real axis and suppose uh, here is a point and it is a complex number which is represented by alpha plus i beta and uh, suppose this is the line corresponding to, uh, to the complex number. Well, the, mod the length of this line is actually the modulus of this, uh, the, of this complex number and if we just place an arrow here then uh, we can just denote the direction of this number and uh, another way of writing this number is in Euler form which is e to the i theta and if I say that this is r the length of this is r then we can also write this number as e r times e to the i theta so what is theta well theta is nothing but the angle between the real axis and this vector well we can also regard this line as a vector because it has a direction with it so this is the theta so this is how we can denote a complex number and now an interesting thing is that suppose we say theta is equal to omega times t and uh, t is a time so what will happen if i increase the t that is, if time increases, then you can see that theta will increase and theta will increase in this direction. So it will have a similar kind of effect of this epicycle, right? So suppose this radius vector is this one and initially it directs to this axis and after that as t increases, theta also increases. So the radius vector also rotates in an anti-clockwise fashion. So we are just going to use this notation of complex numbers to add our sinusoidal waves. Now suppose, uh, let me draw the axis again. Suppose I have vector, uh, one radius vector here and this will correspond to this circle. And suppose the angular frequency is omega 1, okay? and we again consider another radius vector slightly uh, length slightly smaller than this one suppose this one and this is corresponding uh, with omega 2 and now after some time the radius vectors makes an angle something like this let me just draw it for you this is the first radius vector and this is the second radius vector so now how can I add this to radius vector? Well, if you are familiar with vector addition, then it will be very easy for you to understand that we can actually translate this vector to here. Let me just, this is the translated second vector. And then by just joining the this point and this end point, we can actually get the resultant 
vector and exactly this is how a how to complex numbers are added so what we can do here is suppose uh, let me just change the color uh, suppose this circle corresponds to our first radius vector and if we want to add the second radius vector with this one that is if we want to add a second sine wave to our initial sine wave then we have to just draw a circle with center here and just like that so this is the first radius vector and this is the second radius vector and if we now just add them in a vector fashion we will get a sine wave which is the resultant of two sine waves in our example this is, suppose this is the first sine wave and this is the second sine wave so if we just translate this circle here and then something like that then if we plot then if we project this point in that vertical plane then we will get this wave I really hope that the concept is very clear to you now and I will definitely provide some of the best links I could find in YouTube for you to research and know more about this concept and so the conceptual part is done and now we are going to jump into the code section uh, two things I want to mention is that our task is reduced to just drawing those circles and in, in a fashion that the second circle will play uh, will be placed on the perimeter of the first circle and for better accuracy we have to add more number of circles and the resultant uh, graph will be this is the first circle second circle third circle fourth circle and so on so by adding those circles we are just adding the sine waves in a vector fashion so that was the first thing and the second thing is that the code I'm going to use is provided by the famous YouTube channel named the coding train I highly recommend you to visit the channel uh, so let's jump into the code section I'm not going to explain the code in great detail because Daniel has an awesome video about it so here I have our uh, index.html file it is pretty much the broiler plate that follows uh, in every project in every prefabbed JS project the files I'm going to use here uh, will be provided in the github repo and the github repo link will be provided in the description below so please check that out and this is our main file which is the sketch.js so uh, here we have our uh, canvas and this wave array actually stores the points by using which the wave is to be drawn and this is the time which is gonna increase and in our draw loop I have uh, translated the origin first then after uh, then after that a little bit of X shift because that's simply because of UI purpose and after that I am uh, running a for loop and the this number 10 represents how many circles I'm going to use that is how much accurate our approximation is gonna be uh, after that in this example I'm just producing the square wave well by uh, searching in the Wikipedia you can actually find uh, the Fourier series of every function every periodic function so uh, the code for triangular wave sawtooth wave and sine x the modulus of sine x wave you can find in my repo also and uh, uh, in these lines I am actually changing I'm actually incrementing the X and Y which actually is equivalent to uh, shifting the origin the uh, sorry the center of the next circle it shifts the center of the next circle to the perimeter of the previous one and uh, down here I am just drawing the line this line is basically the radius vector for each of the circles and after that uh, obviously I need to draw the circles and when the for loop is over I am just storing the y values in the array and please remember that the unshift function actually means to append the array elements 
at the beginning okay uh, so after that uh, the stroke actually this defines the stroke color you can use any color of your choice and after that this line actually uh, corresponds to this line let me show uh, this line actually is this line now remember that uh, I'm drawing this line from XY to 250 and wave 0 wave 0 simply means the first element of wave and the wave stores only the Y components right so that is okay and after that uh, here is the begin shape and end shape and remember that in p5.js begin shape and end shape means that uh, between them I am gonna plot some vertices and the program will automatically connect the vertices to give us a nice shape so that is uh, required because uh, here we are getting a continuous shape here so I am just putting uh, discrete points but the begin shape and end shape actually connects the lines in a uh, in a fashion that looks pleasing and uh, this is the increment and you can uh, change this increment also and after that another important thing uh, this is a wave dot length it reads wavelength but uh, wavelength means something different in physics so that is a little bit misnormous but okay I'm distracting for my path just forget about it the wavelength simply means here the length of the array now look here that I don't need to save uh, the array elements after this point right because that are never gonna be appear in our on our screen so I am just popping uh, whenever the length is greater than thousand now uh, you can experiment with this also because different screens have different different width so definitely this is gonna change uh, so that was all for this video if you like this video then please comment and share this video with your friends and please subscribe to normalize nerd and thanks for watching